Hey, welcome back. My name is Seth, and you are watching, of course, Mind Your Biz. If you're not already subscribed, it's free. Turn on all notifications as well so you don't miss any more of our privacy chats. Today's subject is Zano, and I have with me a new member of the team who I've not previously interviewed, Crypto Soul. This is a follow up to the interview that you've probably seen on Mind Your Biz of Zano with Crypto Zoidberg. If you missed that, it's from a couple of years ago. Check that out in the playlist for all of our privacy chats. This is something that's very important to me because I think. I think that privacy is the last major frontier of cryptocurrency and DeFi that uh, if we don't get right, we miss out uh, basically um, forever. We, we, we miss the opportunity to retain our privacy. Without further ado, Sol, welcome to Mind Your Biz. Thanks for, for having me here. So for the Mind Your Biz community that does not know you, can you give us sort of a, a, a high level overview? Who is Crypto Soul in, in a nutshell? Yeah, surely. Uh, I have a background in computer science. Uh, I have a master degree in applied math, and I have uh, approximately 10 years experience in game development industry before in 2013, I came to cryptocurrencies where I am at now. So I was working as a software developer at start. And then I remember that I have a um, science background so I decided to spend a lot of time in math because we at Zano we need that and actually uh, I solved a few problems and we published together with Koi we published a paper last year last in 2021 actually we published a paper that called the canon so I'm proud to to make some like a little bit um, of maybe great things uh, to the community. I hope that it will help our industry to evolve. So so that's what... Okay, phenomenal. I appreciate you giving us the background there too. I think it's a little bit less common for... Uh, well, I, th I think most people have become very accustomed to seeing that blockchain projects are not necessarily led by uh, traditionally trained computer science uh, experts and or and le le lesser still or uh, even less of the time are they used to seeing mathematicians, people who are properly trained in math, be involved in cryptocurrencies, which kind of it seems mind boggling to me because the the foundation of of a uh, blockchain is cryptology, right? Or cryptography, rather. Sure, so yeah. it does, does require some math like to, to be able to understand. So yeah, I know for me, it, it, it makes a lot more sense that we would have somebody with expertise in that field talking about consensus models and, and uh, keeping privacy and anonymity through cryptography, the main pursuit. So um, I'm so glad that, uh, that we had this, this opportunity to, to, to set this up. Let me ask you, with Zano, from a bird's eye view, how would you summarize the uh, the yeah the the problems that Zano was invented to solve? Originally, uh, privacy coins um, doesn't have uh, like kind of a proof of stake consensus in them, and Zano from the inception uh, used hybrid consensus, proof of stake and proof of work, and uh, this was like. Uh, kind of new at that point and also we uh, aimed at um, uh, like e-commerce industry at that moment because we thought that it would be nice for, for people maybe to use it as a global market and publish uh, kind of contracts or like uh, on-chain scroll we call it like that and at that moment we actually developed a uh, scheme that allows uh, you to actually communicate with your counterparty using this on-chain scroll and we provided an API for that so that that was like the the, the new thing I think that the Zano brings when when we in 2019 were actually were born so but then we uh, moved to like more privacy, things and uh, now we are solving these problems with privacy and proof of stake phenomenal so let's dig a little deeper into that uh, that side of, of what uh, zano is is trying to solve it seems like like you're saying there have been attempts at proof of stake networks prior to zano of course there have been attempts at privacy chains and especially like many forks of of, uh, of the monero code base and of the bitcoin 
code base. And I think even some that were forks of, of Bullberry, which uh, was a project that, that I know Cryptozoidberg had, had worked on. Um, but Zano kind of stands apart in terms of it trying to create a proof of stake consensus ecosystem and the hybrid consensus ecosystem that you talked about while also maintaining all of the characteristics of a crypto note, specifically something like Bitcoin or, or Monero or, or Bullberry. Um, but there was a, the innovation was Zarkonum, I think you mentioned. That's the, the white paper as well. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about Zarkonum and how does that solve some of the problems that, uh, that have been traditionally faced by crypto note developers attempting to move towards proof of stake? Yeah, I know it's probably yeah. a deep topic, but but please please do your best to make it semi technical or or not yeah, overly. I'll technical. try my best. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you yeah, as as you correctly say that Zano is evolution of uh, Bulberry and Bulberry uh, is evolution of crypto node. So it's like a process of uh, evolving the technology. And uh, yes, in in Zano, Ghibli consensus proof of work and proof of stake uh, was uh, firstly. Um, appeared and then uh, we uh, at some point we decided that as true and name was crypto we need to incorporate uh, confidential transactions with hidden amounts because we don't like amounts uh, be publicly available at the blockchain so everyone can like go to the block explorer and see all the balances and all the transactions that have the balances and the that come um like kind of problem because traditional proof of stake also known as stochastic proof of stake model that we use uh it came mm, from like ages ago it i think it first appeared in peer coin in 2012 uh, first uh that model is very egalitarian so it allows every person to have chances to like to win a block and to make a block you don't need some huge amount of coins to be um, special to, to get entrance into a special privileged group of people who are li liable for making new blocks. So everyone is uh, everyone can do it depending on uh, how many how many coins you have. So uh, using this conception, we have faced the problem that it conception doesn't really fit into the nature of confidential transaction with hidden amounts because when you have amount hidden it hidden in a person commitments a special mathematic object that keeps secret your amount but at the same time you committed to it so it can be used uh, to maintain the integrity of the system and to make uh, sure uh, all the network make sure that all the balances are correct so we uh, faced this problem and we started to, to solve it. And uh, f finally, uh, I find a way how, how this can be solved. And I published a, a short uh, draft uh, on the internet. It, it wasn't a paper. It was like a, a two pages draft. And after that, uh, we got a feedback from Koi, from the Monero developer. Uh, who was, uh, I am very grateful for him for getting the input on this initial uh, research. And after that, we communicate with him and get the response and review from him. And eventually, uh, I invited him to join me to this, this paper. And together, we came up with what is called Zrakanum. So the, is it, this is a way how we can connect in confidential transaction and traditional proof of stake uh, together in one system. That's awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. So it sounds like this has been kind of the one of the largest contributions of Zano to the, um, and then, then this is published under an open source license. I, yeah, surely. I presume. Surely. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it's, it, well, it's funny. I, I mean, a couple of years ago, I, I almost wouldn't have needed to ask when develop, when speaking to a blockchain developer, but, you know, in the current, sort of landscape of DeFi and sort of uh, decentralized in name only projects that are, that are promoting DeFi. It's hard to know. Sometimes there are, yeah, there are, are tools and innovations that are where the code is published, right? It lives on GitHub, but the, uh, but the licensing is very restrictive. So 
that's that's changed unfortunately there yeah not every project is uh is, yeah, is sure. willing to yeah to contribute back yeah it's free and everyone can can see our our paper and our code implementation so everyone is welcome to read it let's talk a little bit about the uh the other problem domain uh that zano is uh, is seeking to solve which is you mentioned e-commerce payments has the mission changed a little bit for for zano recently in terms yeah. of strictly e-commerce yeah we decided that e-commerce um, like is not too much interested uh, at that time so we decided to like a uh, little bit shift our focus from that that field to what we call like an asset layer so we are now trying to incorporate into zana uh, some mechanism that allow that will allow people to create their own custom tokens under the pool and anonymous blockchain with hidden amount and with uh, proof of stake as well so Phenomenal. we yeah, this is what what we are working on now. It's it's not it, it, we have a draft actually, uh, and we have like I have a response uh, uh, from uh, Doctor Aaron Frakert, uh, also known as Aaron Noether. I'm very proud for for him to get get a little input. He showed that I have like some issues with memory proof, and now I I think I solve it, but I didn't publish it yet. And uh, we are trying to make a proof of concept in the code, and then uh, I will work on publish these security proofs and the whole white paper in, uh, in a while. So Got this it. is this is the direction we are moving toward. To. With those confidential assets, and it, it sounds like confidential amounts. Um, is there a plan to have on that first layer? This is all layer one, right? Within within uh, yeah, Zana. Sure. No, no, no additional layers. Um, is there a plan then for there to be some sort of infrastructure put in place for decentralized exchange of those assets? Yeah, we are, we are thinking about it and we are watching this field very carefully because it's very interesting. And surely if you have uh, different assets on your blockchain and it's anonymous, you would like to exchange one to another. And now we are, we're trying and we are working on a concept of how this decentralized exchange can be established. And uh, but at that point, we I can't send anymore because this is in quite an early stage. And I hope that we eventually this year we came up with some kind of solution and it will be presented in a white paper and uh, in a proof of concept code, maybe in testnet. I'm going to ask one one final question related to that, and I think that at the time that I interviewed Crypto Zoidberg, I'm not sure if the white paper was already proposed yet or if it had already been published yet, but I, I think it had been. Where there are currently on Monero, it's not very popular. We've we've discovered there there isn't as much demand for it as as maybe hoped originally, but it's possible to do atomic swaps between Bitcoin and Monero. Is there any look at either bridging assets onto Zano or doing atomic swaps onto Zano for those uh, for those those confidential assets? Yeah, actually, we uh, we had this technology implemented. So we in now currently mining we have atomic swaps implemented. Uh, but we decided that we like we need more comprehensive technology because atomic swaps only allows you to swap between like two blockchains, two predefined ones like Bitcoin and Zeno. And actually, they have, they have some limitations, but it's not very difficult to implement. So yeah, here it is. We, we have it. And this technology that uh, we are working on, it resembles the atomic swaps. It will be private and like atomic as well. Uh, so yeah, maybe this is some kind of connection, conceptual connection between these two things. Okay, phenomenal. Yeah, that, that's where my mind goes. Certainly, is is the thought that uh, that as far as so many assets being out in the, the crypto market cap and and I mean thousands every month, it feels like um, are are being added to the crypto market cap. There has to be an easy way for onboarding if something shows real merit, right? Or, or if it shows market value, there has to be some way to uh, to establish a market between those 
those assets. But it sounds like these are things that you're that you're thinking about in early conceptual phases. So I'm excited to hear more about that. As far as the best places for people to learn about not just Zarkonum, but any future white papers and developments that are coming out of the Zano development team, where should people go to learn more? Uh, I would advise to first go to our website, the Zano.org. Also, we have a quite comprehensive Discord channel, Discord server, I think, uh, and uh, everyone is welcome. Uh, so, every update every uh, important things that people should know about our project will be for sure publish it in the, these channels so please go go ahead and came to our discord servers we are very okay. welcome awesome well hey crypto soul it's been a uh, it's been a pleasure being able to chat with you very quickly about some of the uh, the new developments in, in zano and uh, my new audience, do go check all of that out. All the links are available in the description of this video, as per usual. I'm going to ask publicly, just so that the audience knows, CryptoSoul, did I, did I ask for any payment for us to set up this interview? No. Great. Just confirming publicly that that's the case. Yeah. When it comes to privacy, I feel strongly enough about this that I put in my, my weekend time for free to help promote the, the cause of privacy and learn what sorts of innovations you're contributing to the open source as well. So just wanted to be sure the audience heard that from you as well. Yeah, I'm so, very grateful for the invitation. Thank you. It's genuinely my pleasure, right? I, 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 pay, for, I pay for the privilege of talking about privacy. And, uh, and so it's been, it's been uh, awesome getting to hear more about what's going on in Zano. Thank you so much for, uh, for spending the time with me.